and here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on the 28th of March 2019 by the clock here on the computer. And I'd like to always say hey to Grimner for helping me do all this radio shenanigans. Getting it out to uh, wherever he puts it out. He puts it out in BitChute and YouTube and Spreaker and <laughs> it goes on and on. There's it's quite a list. So if you enjoy this kind of crazy out of the way thinking as opposed to the by the book people, then welcome to 20% off. <laughs> That's about how far off we are. Maybe 80, but I say 20 for now. And we'll say hello to the bots and the bodies in the reallibertymedia.com chat room tonight. Well, my tonight. And we've got Barman, Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, Brackets DC, Asmo, Chalcedony, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow out in Arizona, Ponder Candor, A there, B. Anyway, Rain, Rob Works, Romes, Vanna White, the bot, Vinny, and we've got Anti as W4DKV. It's his alter ego on the RLM. Weather Dork, Z Beth, Z Phantom, and well then, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, me, Frumpy 2, Gromit, Jay's Nines, Jay's Coz, you, Kiss, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, Salamo, Tech Man, and Uno. And I don't know how to read a made-up name, so I'm doing my best on 20% off. And they're shooting ducks in the room tonight, if you're a duck shooter. <laughs> they shoot them all over the place. Ducks. I wonder why it was ducks. Should have been, like, voters. <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, tonight... I was reading the chat earlier, and I usually don't plan ahead to do a a show. I just do it as I do it. And the last week's topic, I'm going to look it, look it up and see what I called it, because I want to do like what Vinny did was a, a series on an idea, but every show it may be a seemingly a little different, but they're all bound together with a common thread. And I'm not real experienced at going out of my way to make sense on the radio. Usually I'm just clowning around to have a good time. But when I thought of doing the 20% off, I thought, well, maybe we'll give some links and reading a little thought. And the, ah, the control games part one. So this will be the control games part two but the topic is based on things like you remember when you were a kid and you heard uh some you, somebody did something that was outrageous or dangerous or not good or whatever and the grown-up would say to you well if john jumps off a bridge are you gonna follow after him and well what do you say when you're eight years old and somebody asks you that and then when you're 28 years old, what you're actually doing is you're following John off the bridge blindly without knowing where he's going. You're just going there too. But there's these illusions for us all to see that we believe if we work hard and do this and do that and be somebody, things will change. But that's hardly true. And I'm trying to make that that side of the equation a little bit more available for people to hear. And I went over to Mines to go get a copy of one of my favorite films about medicine. It was called, uh, uh, geez, was, let me go look what it's called. I, my mind went zip because I was so angry that they, they uh, deleted it. That said the owner of the 
film. Deleted it. Death by Medicine. Okay. And uh, I have to take it off my thing. That's why I couldn't remember what it was called. I'm having a little, like, a fit in my mind about probably the most honest film I ever saw about medicine. And it got banned. And, of course, you're going to say that the person that made the film doesn't want anybody to see it anymore because, well, it couldn't help anybody <laughs> to see that. Um, it seems like the, the truth is the opposite of what we do. Now, it shows itself to me in ways like, uh, say, government. Everybody's complains doesn't matter if you love trump or not if you listen to the person loving trump somewhere in their rhetoric you will hear complaining and that's like the nature of people now and i'm going to call this in the control games because that's what we're being controlled and it's done so subtly that an ignorant man will think it's his idea Hey, Vincenzo, he said, hey, in the chat, had to give him a hey back. Uh, my buddy Vinny does radio with me uh, Saturday and Tuesdays sometimes if he's around. Anyway, so to continue on my rant this week about the control games, and I don't know what anybody could ever do physically to not be involved in this mass deception that we all participate in and i call it that because all the the foundation of it is all based on crap nothing that we know nothing that we see is real it's real to the individual right but to a group how the fuck can a hundred million people agree about anything that's something somebody's telling you do you know a hundred million people i don't um <laughs> I can't count the people I've met in my lifetime. You know, 50-odd years, you're going to meet a few people. But I don't think I met everybody. <laughs> I just think it's too big. It's too ridiculous. The numbers they throw around at us are... To me, they're nothing more than a bad joke, an excuse to continue to do what the system does to us and then lie to us about it, right? right to our faces they do it on film they do it in print they just do it that's what their job is and i've heard people say oh i'm sure well-meaning people try to get into politics so they can change things well if that was the case how did it get what it to be what it is if good people tried to do anything they didn't that's just the illusion of they tried to do something or Use Kennedy for an example. He was, no matter how you slice Kennedy, he was a limousine baby, spoiled fucking brat that didn't have to do anything. He did what he pleased his entire life. So to take him out for printing the money when he was told not to, I mean, he had every excuse to not do what he did. But it seems that he chose to anyway. And they're playing with the federal government. They're not idiots. These people that call themselves the the politicians, the leaders. I remember when it was representation. And I wasn't too bad with, oh, okay, this guy's representation tinning me. i <laughs> make up a new word. I don't know what to call it. Representing me, my ass. I don't think so. And I say that because the cornerstone of my physical success, in my opinion, is my love for cannabis and other flowers and plants. Now, according to the societies that I participate in, having the love for nature is a crime. You are breaking the law. And to them I say... Nah, go fuck off. Go, why don't you sit down and burn one? And then when you're done burning it, if you're not ready to tell me I'm right, burn another one. <laughs> It'll get to you sooner or later. And that's what I mean. We got, we, the plant lovers, 
are being resisted by the people that hold this illusion in control of their life as the all-seeing, all-knowing master of time, space, and dimension. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh, me and people go on the internet here in the chat room sometimes, and we have opposite opinions about this and about that. And then when you lay down at night, you don't even think about that stuff. doesn't even come to me. I, maybe it does to you. If it keeps you up at night, what people say in a chat room... If it's anything more than a giggle or, wow, I didn't know that. I need to find out more and see what, what this means. Then I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's I would call it uh, misdirecting. You know, if you, bring a, if you bring a problem to an existing place that doesn't have a problem, does your input of that problem, does that give everybody else the problem? And I don't, I don't think that works on Real Liberty Media. It works on Facebook and Twitter. And you can see people, they just love to follow each other and give each other a slap on the back. But all the text is the same nonsense. And if you dare to resist the common beliefs that we carry as carbon-based life forms on whatever this thing is we live on well what's your proof because everybody that's ever told me in my life i can prove that all right they couldn't because as i've aged i've found out that they were told a story so their story didn't have any proof it was just a an agreement among people with a certain certificate in a certain business and if you think education is not a business look them up on Dun and Bradstreet and check out how much they're worth some of these colleges are worth so much money they're like small countries they have better economies than people in uh, than countries in Africa should have you know you think with all that wealth they got there that that would be the richest continent on the freaking planet. They've got everything. Well, in my opinion, what happened is a group of other people from other lands decided, well, they couldn't compete with the natural resources of, say, Africa. For example, we use this because this goes to my hemp thing, too. And they couldn't compete so they decided to use second-rate shit and sell that. And basically, over the course of time, through law and regulation and all this good-for-you shit, we're getting stuff we don't want. <laughs> we're paying for it with money that's not real. And the only thing that is real is some people consider what they do for money uh, a drag. They don't enjoy their occupation. They work because they have to. Well, I'm, I've met a lot of people that have learned to enjoy the work they do so they don't have to feel that way about working. And I tripped over Circa, a complete accident. I had no idea she wasn't full of shit, I'll tell you. Because everything that I think about how this game works, my wife thinks. And she says it, and people must, I don't know, Beth Z called her a communist and all this other shit. It was just funny as fuck. But, no, her grandfather was a communist, I believe, on, on her father's side. I've heard some stories about the family. But we're out here in, a, you know, Denmark, for fuck's sake. And I understand that if you've never been here, even just to visit, you got to visit the place to really understand that Denmark is the old United States, what was once the U.S. is, we're here now. And there's some crazy fucking people in charge in this country, too, I'm telling you. They're not, nobody in power of positions of, con of decision and control, really, they don't do anything for us. They do shit for each other and to make a few other people money. And then the trickle, you know, they, we get 7% of what's left over to fight amongst ourselves. Hey, I want some of that. 
and 7% of might sound like crumb and it might be a crumb but we're we're talking about a global freaking economy these idiots have got us all convinced <laughs> that this is real and we participate in it by buying their shit and keeping it real well there's never going to be an opposition to whatever this thing is it's huge it's nasty i found a link the other day I'm going to post it on the reallibertymedia.com chat. It's a lengthy little um, hour and a half. And it's not entertaining at all. It is about the uh, religion and what's going on with religion right now and how it affects politics. And I've told people and I've told people and told people over the years, if you don't support Israel... You can't run for an American office. They won't have an anti-Semite holding a seat of decision in the Congress or the Senate or the whatever. It's all the same crap. State, God, fuck, nonsense. Anyway, so this whole American idea that we got fed when we were younger, you know, because the control games were on when I was a kid. It was just subtle. We weren't. There weren't as many of us, I think. It was harder back in my day when I was growing up to herd and control us because they hadn't perfected the electronics yet. So, boy, when they got a hold of that internet, they sure used it to fuck all of us equally. I will give my hat off to the government for being the sneakiest, low-down group of disappointments I have ever witnessed in my short life. Uh, and that includes all the others, the, cl uh, the clergy and the religion and the educators, all these people that we're, we're raised. See, this is the problem what, that I have with the society I, I'm from, is we were told you have to do this. You have to respect this piece of cloth. You have to say these magic words. And I didn't like it. In fact, the other day, maybe it was today, I read some kid got arrested for refusing to say the Pledge of Allegiance in a public school. Now, there you go. Arrested? I mean, they're making it so common to treat people as shitty as possible without drawing blood. That when they do draw blood, it's like, well, I guess that guy just pushed him too far. He wasn't paying attention to the rules. And they blame the victim for what the crook does. You know, and then we have old stories like Robin Hood and all that crap. What a bunch of nonsense that must have really been. Stole from the king and give to the poor. Why? <laughs> Who's ever fucking done that ever? But it's a good story. Let me and let me read. I see my name come up on the chat. I get excited. Ah, somebody wants to talk to me. And Salamo says it was more difficult back then. Flash, perhaps because the moms were not yet fed the fears of abduction, and the children were sent outside to play. Well, that's what I mean. It wasn't more difficult back then. It was freer. It was different. They hadn't raised all these idiot psychos that we have among us now. That was some clever TV and uh, education church that creates all these wackos that want to A, run around and be police, and B, want to run around giving the police a reason to be police. And I learned that lesson mentally and physically by a fluke of life. Uh, Cirque. I was talking to Cirque one day about Copenhagen. And I'm a city boy. I've been in the city my whole life. I know how to survive just fine in any fucking city. But I was mentioning to her that, wow, it's 10 years from now, this will start looking like L.A. to me. To me. Not to you. To me. 
And five months later, she decided she wanted to live out here in Freddy Town and be a commuter. And wow, I went, okay, that's going to be a little strange because I couldn't get the hang of Danish when I was in Copenhagen. But a lot of people didn't speak Danish in Copenhagen, so that didn't stand out so much. It wasn't very important. I mean, in Freetown, if you want to make a dollar, you're going to know how to speak English. Because a big part of their economy is the hash business. And a lot of people that go there to smoke hash don't speak two words of freaking Danish. <laughs> and Freetown, it attracts a lot of people. The Rolling Stones were there a couple of months ago, but... They did it all fancy. They had a big entourage and big show of the whole thing. But there's other people that, like uh, some actor, Woody something, Woody Harrel, Harrels, Woody Harrelson. He goes, uh, hangs out there, but he tries to be inconspicuous, not make a big deal out of it. And I heard that bit of knowledge from my wife. And she's been going to Freetown since she was a child, so she knows all about Freetown. In fact, any information that I get, I get that information from somebody that knows what the hell they're talking about. That's probably the cornerstone, what makes me believe what I believe. And I'm not the only one in the planet that thinks like I think. Well, maybe exactly. But there's a, there's a scattering. You know, there's a few people here and there that don't have a price. We know who, well, Gremner proved, proved that in his text anyway. And I would venture to guess by the results of knowing Grimm that what he says is true. Other people, I don't know. Sometimes the text just isn't enough to sell me that you're what you say you are. And I get nasty and I, hey, I do radio. Why don't you make a link of yourself? doing all these things that you claim you do, and post it so I can see you. But, now, I understand shyness and shit like that, but if if you're going to write the insane things that this particular person writes, you know, I think you should be accountable for what you write and prove it once in a while. But, it's the internet. You know, and like Grimm says, in the long run, there are no rules. You know, you've got common decency and you have your uh, <laughs> your own personal integrity. And that's it. Yeah, there you go. Woody Harrelson, Dad might maybe have been involved. Yeah, why not? That was huge. Boy, you changed my gear real quick. But <laughs> you see the, the control games, you know. We saw Kennedy get killed, but... That's not what the government said happened. No, no, no. He was killed by a magic bullet from a lone assassin. And then when I saw this video from this other guy a few months back, you know, not to say I ever bought the government's version in the first place, just if you openly disagree with anything popular, guess where you end up? At the dork table, doing dorky things. But, you know, you only live once in life, right? And I don't know how to explain satisfied to other people. You know, are you satisfied with your life? Uh, don't you want to be somebody? And I said, no, <laughs> not really. I'm uncomfortable in a room where five people want to talk to me. I don't think so. Because that's not the nature of the people that we became in, in the long run. Now, we started out there. When back in the 70s when I was growing up, uh, people were friendly and you could you meet them in public. And, hey, where are you guys going? Can I go too? And that's what we did. We were kids and we just meet and do shit and have fun and go home. And, of course, since the 70s, I talked about this a little bit back about I started to wonder if any of those serial killer stories were even true. 
<clears throat> maybe it's just another case of excellent acting and uh the promise of your family will never want for anything forever if you play this part and people are going to think you're a horrible greasy shitty person blah 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 but why not until i see proof and then they go well they've got confessions and dna and they also got his people doing life in prison for murder they didn't do. And then 30 years go by and they go, oh, we've got new evidence that proves you're not guilty. Well, isn't that nice? They've got evidence to prove that you didn't do what you said you didn't do 30 years ago. So where does this all this illusion come in where? We're so easily manipulated to believe whatever we're told by certain people to get a certain result. And today, the damn uh, <laughs> prisons are traded on the stock exchange as a business. For profit business. So you've got cattle. <laughs> you gotta, you got to feed them and you got to fence them. And if they get out of line, you got to put them down because they, they're a danger to the the other whatever cattle huh. saying when I was a young fella these things didn't exist all this uh, hatred in society and all these groups that exist today they they were in the process I'm sure they were working on this the society masters that run this crap that think we're dumb enough to tolerate any fucking thing watch this we're going to spray them with shit from the sky. And 10% will complain and the rest of them won't say a fucking word. Watch. And I bet they got bankers betting on how many of us are going to ever complain about what they're doing. Because <laughs> nothing changes for the better. It always gets worse. Except on an individual, personal level. And that, of course, is if you're not judging your success in life by the zeros on your bank account. <laughs> Some people do that. Me, nah, not so much. Never was a big, flashy, fancy kind of character. Um, just like to have enough. Whatever enough is, that was my goal. That was my intention. That's what I get. Sometimes I even turn things down because, no, that's too much. I've got enough. And I say that because Rob loves bacon. And I made a lifetime friend out of Rob. If me and Rob were ever in the same room together, I would give Rob all my bacon. I don't care if I had all the bacon. I don't want to eat any bacon. I like ham. <laughs> Now, I'm one of those fussy Jews that likes the upper shit. I just don't like the lower shit. And then you go, wow, bacon. Okay, whatever. It doesn't look that exciting to me. See, personal taste. What I didn't do, whatever group of people you're in, because there's lots of people that love bacon. They're a group. They've got this whole country here, Denmark, their biggest export is pork. I don't get this whole illusion when, when I look at this and then look at that. Things don't match. They don't fit right. But if you look at just a small uh, small enough amount of the picture, then it's kind of satisfying to uh, an, an, inv an individual. But when you got a group, then you need more details, more explanations, and more proof. And I think in the 70s, somehow or another, we were um, conditioned through the society to not require or to expect or to seek proof. And what they offer as proof is some educated prick with a PhD and some crap that doesn't really do anybody any good at all. But he's got a PhD in this sciencey shit. It's all about money. It ain't about sciencey shit. 
So he makes this claim. And then the people above him, he kisses their feet and rubs their nuts and does the shit in the little room in the black robe. And then they give him a certificate because he did what he was told to do and said what he was told to say. Not because he spoke the truth. <laughs> so 20% off in the control games, one of the first things I noticed was not telling the truth can make you a wealthy miser. Man, if I was a dishonest, uh, greasy, slimy, shitty person, human life form, man, whatever you choose to call it, I think that I could do well in that world, but I don't feel good about that kind of lifestyle, so I choose not to pursue it. Ha <laughs> ha ha! That's a good excuse to be a pothead bum, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, can you see that? If you went to the bank and uh, after you you know you've been working with this banker for twenty years, and then you find out he's been smoking dope every day for twenty years, and you didn't know it, <laughs> and that's how pot truly is. And how do you look at somebody else and go, "Wow, you're high"? No. Those people aren't high. Those people are wasted. There's a difference. Just like anything else, you can eat too many apples. So why can't you smoke too much pot? See, you just got to smoke enough. Um, but the powers that be, you know, in this control game world, they don't allow that. You have uh, expectations people want i expect the best and i want to be a two tokes and i want to be on my back and that's where did that come from because i like to smoke my stuff maybe watch a movie play some video games on the interwebs chitter chatter in the room do my puzzle you know mess around the house somewhere talk to cirque even sometimes <laughs> huh honey <laughs> She's in there slaving over a hot elixir because that's what wives do in this house. Oh, I think me and Rob were bantering about, huh? No, oh, I'll live. But me and Rob were bantering about uh, something, something about women. And uh, I said, Cirque isn't allowed to say that to me. <laughs> And then Rob says right back, yeah, well, she probably thinks it. <laughs> but no, I, I don't think so. I think that if she thought it, she would be in a really bad mood because she's too happy of a person to think of horrible shit. Got lucky. I don't I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe she's not real. <laughs> so, yeah, Salamo, lead yourself. True. But you got to really understand the whole thing is all in your head anyway. There is no real leadership out there doing anything. This is all commerce and business disguised as other shit. Oh, so despicable. I, I would See, I would be embarrassed to be a part of a group like that. That would be beneath my integrity. I couldn't do that to other people in order to survive that that's not it's like being a thief or a, like <laughs> no it's the same thing as be it is a thief that's pretty much what i'm saying i'm probably going to get in trouble for this one with the gods above or something <laughs> maybe uh they'll strike me with lightning yeah if that jesus and god stuff is all real why am i still talking <laughs> Because there's no cops to call to sit on you to get you shut up. <laughs> I mean, wow, freedom of speech. Remember when we never even thought of it, never even came to anybody's mind. I didn't hear this freedom of speech crap until I realized, hey, there's a group of people over there who want to take these other people's right to speak away from them. And it works. It works really good. <laughs> But you got to bomb a couple of buildings, level them. I mean, 100-story building, bring them down. Maybe a 47-story, too. Bring one of those down. That'll get people's attention. You know that people will believe anything that you tell them 
from a seat of power in a disaster. <laughs> you got those dumbasses on the news. What is that? Fox and CNN and CBS, ABC, BBC. And those are just the English ones and the American ones I remember. But, wow, I've never really been a fan of uh, what was, I don't know, what would you call it? What was good for everybody usually was a disaster to me. Don't know why. Um, thinking back when <laughs> I was a kid in school. All right, and this is where that, you know, if John jumps off a bridge came from. When I was a kid in school, I forget what grade it was, what year it was, mid, eight, somewhere between 8 and 10. And I was always the first kid in the class finished with my tests. That was just the way that went. And uh, this one particular day, I noticed my desk was a little bit messy, and I figured I'd take the time extra to clean my desk. Well, as the other kids were finishing their tests, they started to do what I was doing. Not all of them, but some of them. So at the end of the test, the teacher says, Well, if Lewis jumps off a bridge, how many of you are going to follow him? And two kids raised their hand because <laughs> they didn't know what the hell they were raising their hand to. It was this kind of a horrible thing to say to a group of children, you know. And we're, see, that's what I mean. We're not taught to think for ourselves. We're taught to follow other people's example and do what other people that are successful do. And being a successful finishing a test first, are you kidding me? Well, I did good in the you know, the grade thing at that particular year, so it didn't, wasn't didn't really work that way. How can I explain it better? Um, well, still, as you grow up, you start to realize when you follow other people, you're just following them because you have to. You don't have a choice. There's no opt out. There's no hey, I want to try it this way. Um, I remember reading a couple, maybe it was two or three years back. There was a science class in a Florida school, and science experiment blew up, and the kid that did it got arrested for doing it. This is how insane the system that I'm from became. I guess, in a way, you could say it was always like that. You know, it was open for mm, change. You know, there were so many different kinds of groups looking for change that nobody really, it was like the Wizard of Oz. Nobody really has ever paid attention to the, the wizard behind the curtain. And damn, now they're making laws so that if you openly speak about the wizard behind the curtain, Israel, well, then you ain't going to go anywhere. But mm, I post stuff and try to let people know and, it's not a big topic of conversation. I give it that. It doesn't seem to interest people that we have a Wizard of Oz life and we truly have a wizard that says, do this and you'll be that and this and the other. But there's never any proof. There's just the voice of the wizard telling you what to do. <laughs> Behind the curtain. There's these other fuckers, and they don't even claim to be the people that they say they are. They're somebody else pretending to be a group of people. And this thing is so huge and massive and deep-rooted. They got it through, the control came through the press. They've always owned the press, all of it. When man learned to write, he learned how to control other men. Well, and I think it was, was it Salamo or Ann Weldon that was talking to somebody about which is worse, the word, yeah, Rob Works. Um, Rob Works didn't think that the printed word is as dangerous as a bullet, and I think it is. I think they're equally evil. E whatever evil is, or bad, you see, duality thing. They're the negative side. You can't get a positive result out of a bullet. Well, I could save my life. Uh, well, maybe you were supposed to die. Who the fuck knows? See, we're taught all this stuff. 
And then if you don't believe in the organized stuff, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, it's called I'm thinking for myself. Doesn't mean I'm right. It just means I'm thinking for myself. Now, the society being a society, just because they say something, that doesn't mean they're right either. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys week in and week out. In the long run, it's all about what you believe, whoever you are. (laughs) Then we collide and we try to explain ourselves to other people. and That doesn't work by design of the language because that got manipulated as well. Ask Vinny about that. Miss Mary, Graham Z. She knows a shitload about the truth of the language that we commonly use in our daily life. But that doesn't change the fact that it happens. Knowing it, all this knowledge that we've acquired through the internet is wonderful and it's great to have, but like they took my link down, it could be gone tomorrow. There are people who really believe they control us. And they prove it with their feeble attempts at censorship over what you hear and what you don't hear. I've even read their banning books on what Amazon, what is that big thing everybody loves, Amazon. And, of course, there's another another trivial bit of income they could probably care less about the printed word because they want to control the printed word. And it, what a better way to do it than electronically. <laughs> you only see what we let you see. But we don't know that because we're in control of our lives. and We do everything we want because we're free. <laughs> and I think, wow. <laughs> We used to be free before all this electronic shit came around and slave us. I mean, damn, I remember uh, uh, growing up, there weren't video cameras everywhere taking my picture and my license plate to prove where I was on Sunday at 3.30 in the (laughs) a.m. People asked you, where were you? And you told them, and that was the end of it. Where was the need to lie and pretend you were somewhere else what the fuck was the point of that were you maybe breaking the law (laughs) or were you up to shenanigans or no good (laughs) because hey you know 20 percent off or not the control games won't allow you to have too much fun you're only entitled to have this much fun because you got to do all this other shit and if you don't do the other shit let me tell you you're not going to have any fun at all. <laughs> and that's the that's the way I see that crap. Oh, man. What would be wrong with living your life doing what you damn well please when you do want to do it? I don't see anything wrong with that. Then people, well, you're irresponsible. and Yeah, maybe, I, maybe that's it. Hey, sir, am I irresponsible? Yep. My wife gave me a big thumbs up on irresponsible. But see, there you go. It's not a secret. And that's uh, the cornerstone of my three-step plan to unfunk the world. Because if you don't lie, then what's going wrong? You know, when things go wrong, they call them accidents and all this other mishap and bullshit like that. But If you're dealing in the truth about life, the kind of accidents that they refer to wouldn't happen, like people being inoculated and ending up with brain problems and dying, things like that. Oh, he overdosed on his medication, and then he shot five people because he thought he was Rambo. (laughs) Don't meme me as anti for no particular reason no i'm just reading the chat out loud being funny but yeah i was going off on a crazy old rant tonight because you know just because it's everybody does it why the hell do you want to do it because everybody else is doing it oh i made a comment to on type the other day and i'm going to say this out loud <clears throat> because I think it's pretty good. I don't have any respect 
for anybody on the planet Earth who earns a living using a gun. There you go. Earns a living using a gun in society earns a living for those of you that didn't understand what I meant when I typed it but deep thoughts come out of me when I'm in smoky land I sit here with my little marijuana cigarette and I go into thinking progress and start thinking about progress and you know what happens <laughs> nothing <laughs> things are still the same they're the same today as they were the day before, but I'm not having a bad life. I think life is cool. I think people are cool. I don't have any problem with any physical encounter I have with another person. It's always all right. They might not like me very much, but nothing ever happens. It's just life, you know. Um, so to make all this hoopla like the Venezuela and the Russia and the USA and the Denmark and let all that stuff control me because they control the resources well I'm going to fight that control that's pretty much my nature I think is to not be in your group if you have a group I'm, I'm going to go over there with a book and let, you know you guys have fun I'm, I've got something to do and I've been that way for a long, long life. And it's not appealing to a lot of people. But my wife, because I don't speak the Danish, uh, if I don't want to be hanging around in the with them working on their cupcakes and sewing their dresses in there, I can just come in here where I'm at now and just do whatever I want. And I think that's okay. Now, some people insist that you do certain things to please them. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, when it has to be spoken, then the person doing the pleasing is probably not doing their best. I think, I think pleasing other people is something that I decide to do. And I do it in kind of obscure ways, I would say, compared to the norm, you know. The loss of language has done me a world of good. I don't miss disagreeing with people about everything. I really like living here where whatever I think is my, to the family that I am married into, whatever I think is my business. That doesn't dictate anything to them. I'm just talking to them. Um, no, no, no. See? And I said, and if this is aimed at one particular group of people, they're in, they're called enforcement because without them, all this other shit we got going on wouldn't happen. So in my opinion, you have to be a complete loser to want to earn your fiat currency pointing a weapon at and threatening other people with it to get them to obey you. That is the bottom of the barrel, not the top. I don't want to be treated that way. I have been treated that way by the cops a few times in the States. And I think it was mostly in California. I think it was only in California when I look back on being treated badly by the police. Um, I got a, <laughs> I'm going to do a rerun of an old hitchhiking story, driving story. I was driving with another guy across the country to go do something. I won't go into the specifics about. But we had the stuff in the truck that I was driving without a license. And I was going a little fast. We were using a back road, not not the interstate, but you know the highway system and back roads and whatnot to get to this place. And I'm driving too fast like usual, and the cop nails was, well, I didn't have any ID, and the other guy did, and he had a license and all that, but I didn't. So he said, ah, come on, I'm going to take you guys back to the, to the jail for a bit and check you out. Well, what ends up really happening, it takes about two hours, three hours, they're shift changing. And the cop from the 
morning shift that pulled me in said, ah, you want to mess with this or not? And the guy coming on the shift said, nah, fuck it, let him go. And they just let us go. They didn't search the truck. They didn't give us any crap. They just said, nah, we're not going to fuck with you. Watch your damn, and keep him out from behind the wheel and watch your speed and get the fuck out. So we did. But that was like 1970. What is it? 80, 80, 80 or 81 maybe. Somewhere in, oh, wait a minute. It was 82 or 83. I was going to New Orleans at that period of time. I think it was 83. So even back then, in rural America, the police still had a little bit of heart. You know, they weren't all about the arrest and how much money they're going to get. And gimme, gimme, gimme and asset forfeiture and all this other crap we've got. They used to just say, well, you're not really a danger to anybody. You were speeding a little bit. You don't have a license. Go fuck off. Leave us alone. And that's how life was. And it's turned into this... Wherever you go, people want to see papers and ID and cards and this and click your fucking face. and Everybody's got a phone. <laughs> it's insane. They don't see the control that really is or the control of the Internet. I don't think they see it that way. I see it that way. Of course, I get told... You're a nut. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, nut man. <laughs> but that's okay, you know, because I would assume because of the thoughts that I have, which all my life have been just a little different than most people, that that would be the expected result. Yeah, of course, you're going to ridicule my point of view because you got a different one. That's okay. I don't care if you got a different point of view or not. That isn't even the point of me speaking about my point of view. I'm just trying to show you is we're all the same in the respect of I'm right and you're wrong. I got proof. I know shit. I'm somebody. And I think that's all just turns out to be a bunch of crap in the long run. You know, when... uh what kind of example i could give you a clean example for uh, when when i'm uh doing something here and sir says oh you want a sandwich and i go yeah well when i was a kid my mom used to say that to me and say well the kitchen's over there <laughs> she didn't want to make me a sandwich she was just riding me but my wife i make a sandwich i put two pieces of bread and something in it and that's a sandwich but my wife will get in there and grill this and put stuff in it and make it really nice. So it's different, you know. But those results are the results you get from somebody when you treat them good. The better people are treated, the better they are to each other. That's what I think. Then you got this other side of life where, uh, what do they call it? Respect. You'll respect my Thorfta, or I'll shoot you in the foot. <laughs> I suppose, you know, <laughs> if a guy said that, and how do you know, just because somebody goes, okay, I respect your authorita, how do you know they're not lying to you to just to shut you up? Maybe. <laughs> now, I could be on to something here. There might be loads of people in the real world that look at authorita and they smile when they go by and then they just wipe that smile off when they're out of sight because they're free of it. And there's a lot of people that don't like law enforcement on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Hmm. There's a few of them. I won't name you guys. You know who you are. Everybody else knows who you are here too. But the uh, if you hear the radio shit and you don't, and you don't go over to reallibertymedia.com to chat, it's an experience because we all think we know stuff. It's so insane how we behave in writing. you know. So to sit back and, and take this all out of heart and jump off the house. I'm going to go jump off my house and end it all because Rob Works laughed at me on the reallibertymedia.com. <laughs> I don't think so. I think very... Uh, <laughs> 
very little of what what people type um, sadly I think that's called I'm an ego maniac because the way I feel about it it's my business how I see the world not yours and our agreeing whoever we are I use Rob because me and Rob banter all the time but for me and Rob don't have to agree, and he's so fucking sarcastic anyway. You never know what to make a Rob works. He's a character. <laughs> but now, <laughs> there's other people on there that they just, I don't know. They don't play as sarcastically as Rob does, and it tends to set riffs. Like him and Vinny didn't get along for a while. And I was... Not caught in the middle of anything. I just, hey, I get along with both of you, so you guys figure it out. And let me know what you decide. I'm not saying shit. I'm not choosing sides. I don't care who's going to buy me a pizza. If I agree with them, I'm out. <laughs> and when you leave people alone and you just let them, you know, banter out their problem, they usually will come to an answer. But... We've got some kind of connection between uh, arguing, verbally, printing, and violence. And I don't think it's violence for somebody else to tell me to go fuck myself. Because you know what's not going to happen? I'm not going to go fuck myself. That's the, that's the stupidest thing. <laughs> I say it too, I know. Don't don't get on me, people. <laughs> this isn't about how honest I am, is it? <laughs> well, I guess it would be. But, you know, the near misses in life with authority when I was younger. And even the way that cop in Taos, New Mexico, that, that guy was, he was incredible. I don't know why the hell he did what he did, but he had to go to Albuquerque and I had to go there. So he figured he'd take me along for a ride instead of arresting me for hitchhiking on the interstate. And I thought, wow, that was pretty nice. Thanks, guy. <laughs> well, anyway. Ah, uh, the fun memories of my life. And now, <clears throat> I've got all this to look forward to. It was 49 degrees Fahrenheit today. And it's going to be that way until Sunday. And then it's going to drop back to 40. <laughs> See? Nature has a sense of humor, you know. She gets you all warm and fuzzy and feeling good, and then she goes, ah, get your coat. I changed my mind. I'm going to have a nippy day for you today. But, hey, that, see, that ability to flow with changes and extremes and disasters and just roll with it. What are you going to do? Complain? <laughs> I'm going to change the world. <laughs> no, you're not. Nobody's changing anything. I think the interpretation of the world is an individual idea. But when they've gone and taken control of what you're allowed to see and say and how you can represent what you've learned about Earth in your life, <laughs> and the best part about it is the people with the biggest voice in the whole game have zero proof of anything that they do and all their proof always turns out to be a lie <laughs> wow how how can you not trust people like that they have my best interest at heart <laughs> As long as I pay the fines and the fees and the bills and all that other crap that's, you know, all voluntary. Because you can always opt out. I don't want to do this anymore. Fuck this. I'm leaving. No, you can't. People will lose their mind. I know I have seen them do it on my way out the door. You can't leave. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I could do whatever I can live with. So when I realized I can do whatever I can live with, I think I learned it killing some rabbits. And the reason I think it was that was I didn't enjoy the first kill. That was a little tough. 
The second kill, eh, that wasn't as bad as the first one. But when we're gutting them and I'm looking at this little part, you got to take this part out. We can't cook it. It's got poisonous kind of stuff in it. From what I can remember, this is how long ago it was. It was a teenager. And I realized I have limits. I had no idea until I killed a rabbit that I had any limits at all. Because TV taught me, hey, you just point a gun and pull the trigger and whoever the fuck is over there ain't going to be there threatening you no more. Well, yeah, but I have limits. I drew the limit with a rabbit. Not only did I draw the limit with it, but I never went back to see, hey, what if I like this? What if I really deep down enjoyed it? Then what do I do get when I get bored of rabbits? <laughs> <laughs> so when that particular thought, oh, I'd get bored of killing rabbits, I stopped. I went, no, oh, no, no, that's a nasty place to go in a dangerous world that we're in. So I think what I did was somehow mentally got out of that dangerous world. I didn't, I didn't want to participate in it, just like the financial world I've avoided. I've um, played in it, and I've dabbled in it, but everything I've done has all been off my own back, so I didn't have to go to other people for funds and get in debt to do this and owe people and be obligated. That, no, 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 that wasn't going to happen. But that's a staple of life. We wouldn't have the house if Cirque didn't do that. But, eh, you, <laughs> when you're already doing something, Changing that from A to B, it's changing, but it's still the same thing. It's really not any... It, it is different legally, and you, there are benefits to owning rather than renting. And you go into all the legal bullshit details of it. But the things that I think are the valuable part is... You know, like tonight, she was a little late coming back from the city, but it was still sunny out. She comes running in the house. I'm going to take Hannah to the beach. There's still sunlight. <laughs> so to have a dog and a house and live where there's a beach to go run your dog is what she wants. So there you go. And she does that stuff in her life to make those things possible the way she wants them done. I'm from America. I can't do the things here in Denmark that Zerk can do. The same as if she would have gone to America with me, uh, then she'd be in the background and I'd be the, the front of everything. Well, fortunately, Denmark's more or less a matriarchal female kind of country. I mean, the men are men, and the women are scared of us and all that shit still, but they run the businesses, and they're more in the forefront of society out here than they were in the States. And it's, uh, I don't hear a lot of complaining and whining about the genders being treated differently. You get that here, Cirque, where the women get paid, no, they don't get paid as good as the men and all that. It's the same thing? What? Oh, okay. She says it's a long topic. But it's uh, it's not like she's come home from work ever complaining about, oh, the men get all treated so good and they treat women so bad. I don't, I've never heard her complain about anything like that. In fact, I can probably count the days on one hand in five years that she's come home and actually complained about a day at work <laughs> usually she doesn't so what she does is like listening to another language what the hell i don't know anything about your damn job i don't even want to know i don't even think i can ever remember the damn name of the place she works at because no matter how old i get no matter what i learn my roots are still back where I'm from. I still got family and, and uh, associates back in the States. And I've got the internet here to connect at any time I need to. I just don't need to. And fortunately for me, I'm old enough and I'm far away from America enough that people don't need the services I, 
that I performed when I was there. Can't do them from Denmark, so I'm obsolete now. So me and Cirque said, ah, you're retired. Ah, ah, ah. So I'm a retired guy now. And I'm living a, a comfortable life. You know, uh, what? See, my comfort would drive somebody else to alcohol. Now, I mean, tonight I wanted to go meet her to uh, at the train and take the dog and go up to the grocery and pick up a few things. But she was running a little late. The trains were fucking up off schedule down in, in the city. So she came in a little bit later and I couldn't meet her and do the radio at the right time. So I didn't get to go. <laughs> My sacrifice to the wild tonight is I didn't go to the store. <laughs> But I can go tomorrow. And that's what I mean. I'm never rushed for anything. Uh, I don't feel that excessive need. I've got to have this. and I've got to have that. Gimme, 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 gimme. But I remember living in that kind of uh, lifestyle and environment where plentiful will, it, it breeds that kind of greed. People get greedy and they expect stuff. And I think it's a state of mind. and You can control it if you know there's a problem. But if that's your life and you think it's okay, there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> I'm fine. Give me a cigarette. <laughs> Get it your fucking self. I'm not your dog. <laughs> Ever have a conversation with somebody in that kind of way where they expected you to do them favors and treat them a certain way because of who they were. <laughs> I don't give a fuck who you are. That could be my problem, though. I'm not really sure at 20% off. I mean, when you think about all these control games, the way I see them compared to the way that other people see them, they think I'm insane. Whoa, there's nobody trying to control us. We have freedom. We can vote for other people to make our decisions. That's how free we are. <laughs> yeah, well. So I ended up living in a place where the people that live in the place know that the people that think they run shit, they don't run shit. They just think they run shit. <laughs> it's a mindset. Got very little to do with what you can physically put your hands on and prove. It's how you feel about it. <laughs> and that doesn't go anywhere. You're never going to get a group. <laughs> We're going to storm Washington with people that don't believe the Senate exists. <laughs> so, who's going to care? <laughs> what you need to do, this is the advice from 20% off, is now that these here senators are making all this stuff legal from state to state to state to state to state, I think it's high time that Congress opens session with a hookah. You know, for the good of the people, to show the people how truly harmless cannabis is, the Senate and the Congress should engage in some form of cannabis, whether it be tea or cupcakes or put some in your fucking cigar and suck on that. But they should do that for us so we, as a collective, could lose our fear of the evil devil's lettuce for once and all. But will they do that? No. You know what they're going to do? They're going to write a bunch of shit in print. They're going to do these little blurbs on the internet you know, 5, 10 seconds, 5 minutes, 20 minutes and they're going to tell us what we're supposed to know. <laughs> well, we decided it's going to be legal in two more years. You just hang on to your black market people. Don't go anywhere just yet. We're, we're still working on the finer details. <laughs> and see, and that's where all the truth comes in. If you weren't doing backdoor deals and conning people, you wouldn't need two years to do it. You just do it, and it would be done. But we don't live like that. We live in crap. I don't know. 
Anybody on the RLM got a one-word name for the what you identify this life as? <laughs> Hookahs for all. Flash has spoken. Well, Grim, I just think it's a it's a way to prove for once and all. It would just prove it. Who wouldn't believe? I mean, even non-voters and non-believers, the people in the population need to see the leaders, these representatives that have taken power, show us. You know, they won't give each other inoculations. Why not? Hell, half of these doctors, I ain't going to inoculate my children. What do you think? I'm an idiot. <laughs> but you're going to because I got a boat payment coming due and I need four more inoculations to pay this mother off. So get bit, come here, roll up that sleeve, little girl. I'm going to stick you with a needle. Well, that, see, that's the negative, shitty side of life I see. And I just believe in my mind that if these people would smoke and get a nice buzz going, as I do, the anger level drops and the honesty level goes up a couple notches. You find it harder to hurt somebody else when you feel good. I mean, think about the shitty, nasty mood that you have to be in to defend yourself. You know, you're walking down the street whistling, ooh, 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 and the next thing you know, some son of a bitch puts a gun in your back and wants your money. Where does your good mood go? <laughs> it doesn't stick around. Hell no, you're either going to fight or hit the brakes and run. So these, you know, the duality is pumped into us like it's normal. And there's other ways to explain things that we have been taught to believe that are more honest I would say in my in my opinion the way I I see one person being honest and then I see this other person I think they're dishonest I'll at least show you why I think they're lying I don't just call them a liar okay you're full of shit and that's the end of it no 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 if I'm going to take the time to call you out on your story I'm going to have a reason why I think your story is bullshit and then offer you an opportunity to show me where I'm wrong. You know, if you're going to accuse me of something, that's how I want to do it. Uh, <laughs> entertainment. Grimner says, one word term for what I determine this life is entertainment. Yeah, my negative side came up with crap because of you know, inoculations, thing, the water, the food, the flying planes in the sky dropping shit on us. Nobody even fucking knows what they're dropping on us. You got to get a tester and test your fucking soil to find out what the government's putting in your backyard from a plane. Wow. And I don't think Cakes would be insulted when I bring him up because he is... One, I know Pancakes, personally. I've met the man. He's everything he said he was, blah, blah, blah. And about two years ago, he was just livid and feeling ill because of the whatever spraying they were doing where he lived. It was just not pleasing him one bit. Now, a couple of years go by. He's Physically, he's doing much better. But at a period, he was, his health was going down he was worried and i don't think it was a mental thing i think it was whatever spraying affected him okay now that's my opinion of my friend's story about a very individual personal experience right and when you tell other people what the other person hears is what they're indoctrinated to understand. That's that's universal. Free thinking and doing it, you know, from your own sense of life is not a welcome thing. People will make fucking jokes and they'll rib you and they'll roll their eyes at you. But when I ask them, you know, what exactly is your proof? 
whatever proof they offer me, I can open up a link on the internet and show them the exact opposite of what they just told me. So, all I can really decide now is somebody's lying about something. If there's two different sides, somebody's not telling the truth. Can't be a little of this and some of that. And no, it's this or it's not this. And we've been diversified into believing that you can mix all these things together and everything that comes of your mixture is going to be wondrous and it's going to be so good for the progress of the world and it always turns out to be another lawsuit to keep some lawyers fat. Give me a second here. Thank you for your patience. After that rant, I needed a super swig of elixir. Anyway, yeah, cowboy moments. Enjoy. Yeah, well, everybody's got a dark side, and everybody has a light side. Let's say that. And the goal in life for me is to somehow balance this shit, because I have equal good ideas as I do negative ideas, bad ideas, whatever. positive ideas, ne there you go. I'm so stuck on the fucking words too. The point is, I know it. I'm not, not, <laughs> I am not capable of shifting gears completely and learning new ways to speak. That's why I gave up the Danish thing in the beginning. If the English I know has got me mentally where I'm at now, what is the point of another language? What what am I going to accomplish? Nothing. I might impress one or two people that a year that normally would go, hey, American, go back to wherever you're from. And big deal. They're not going to do anything. They're just, that's their opinion. So I think to live in a world where your expectations of other people are higher than your expectations of yourself is insane. Well, it would be insane if I tried it. I think by the appearance, my physical appearance would indicate uh, if you're if you're taught to believe there's reasons for why people do the things they do, then that's what you'll you'll believe. And then there's some people like the way I look at Cirque. Cirque is just Cirque. I don't I don't know what to expect out of her from one day to the other outside of I love you, honey. Then everything else is a who knows what she's going to come up with today or what what art project or who knows who might come by the house. Um small things, little things that just, just life things. So I think, <clears throat> ah, wow. Not having to participate in the game. I didn't realize that other people might look at that and think, mm. oh, well, you've got it made because you got a partner. Uh-huh. Well, I had it made before when I didn't have a partner, too. But I just don't talk about how I got where I got and where I'm at doesn't matter. I'm visiting basically in a foreign country and I'm pleased to be here. Life goes on daily and eventually I'll croak. <laughs> so uh, so Cirque's thing is to either keep me alive as long as possible or dig a deep ditch in the backyard and push me in it. <laughs> it's, it's a no-brainer. Oh. <laughs> but Rob wants to come visit soon, honey, but he can't get a passport. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> I'd be ended up in that ditch fast. <laughs> I'm kidding, Rob. I'm just joking around. But see, that's what I mean, the control freaks. So, whatever crime that a, a man or woman does in their in their early years in life 
the system has taught us to collectively torture that person forever for being inconvenienced by the state for breaking one of their laws. Now, the Scandinavians, they're... They've got prisons out here, but they're more like hotels for the wayward soul. They're, uh, hey, Cowboy Tex, sending me something. Let me open this. Hope I don't blow up the internet. Oh, man, I don't think it's going to open. Oh, no. It's a Snoopy. I'm not short. I'm just more down to earth than most people. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but there, and I've never been a victim of my size i laugh i don't know why this i think tall people to me you guys aren't gonna like this i hope you're not tall people because if you're tall tall people to me look awkward <laughs> and clumsy because they need so much more room and resources to survive and i know that one from personal experience i told you when i was working with steve matthews Big, tall, six foot five, about 260, huge fucking guy. Intimidating, looked like a football player, like it was active. It was just his, his work kept him fit. <laughs> we'd eat, we'd go to restaurants, he'd eat a me meal, and he'd tell the girl, yeah, give me two of these, and she'd try to walk away, and I'd have to yell, hey, what about me? Don't I get to eat too? <laughs> that is how much it took to fuel him. And it took a portion of that to fuel me. So, when you look at life in terms of uh, finance and money and all that kind of stuff, I would assume the person that uses the least is more attractive than the person that uses the most. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in my assumption. But Steve had a lot of pretty toys, and he had a nice wife and two kids, and he was fairly successful in life financially what, with what he and, and his wife did for money. But he was um, didn't change him. He was still whatever he was. Those things just way to judge him. <laughs> you got such a nice wife. Oh, you have such a nice truck. And, what it took to fuel this guy and uh, keep him in alcohol and drugs and whatnot that he was doing. When that was a lot of money, he was going through with that kind of crap, too. But it, me, not so much because I'm a little guy. It doesn't take much of anything to fuel me. I'm pretty uh, compact, I think is the right word. But... I've always looked on it like how lucky my little brother is huge compared to me. He's about 5'11 or so, maybe 6, 6 foot. But with his new gimp, now he walks with a cane. It's oh, it's terrible. But uh, he's a big boy, and he always ate twice as much as me. Didn't bother me any because I always never need it. I don't know how to explain it. It probably isn't making any sense. But I've always thought more of not needing as much as other people kind of because i'm small and all that and instead of being insulted by it i've always looked at it as a equal thing in its own right just depends on what side of it you're on you know i guess if you're in a intellectual defeat and you have the ability to look down at somebody and see the top of their head that could be a i don't know an egomaniac's uh, perfect moment. But if you're going to be a victim of words, why? I, oh, man. And then we go back into the loop. And I think it's the control games. We've been taught to do the most horrible shit to each other, and it's all socially acceptable. Because we got freedom of speech. We can say what we damn well please. Yeah, well, like the Internet's teaching me, you can say it until they decide to pull the link or the plug or whatever. Let me finish this coffee. Hold on.
And now we return to another episode of 20% Off with your host, me. Ah, we're going to look for something on the internet here. Let me read a little chat. Hopefully, I'll read it out loud at random. I'll start at Barman. The government, which was designed for the people, has got into the hands of the bosses and their employers. The special interests. An invisible empire has been set up above the forms of democracy, Woodrow Wilson. Ah, uh, he sold us. At, don't, no, no, he didn't, he didn't accidentally do anything. That thing was set up and executed by probably the brilliant minds of the time. They waited for a holiday. They had a skeleton crew of senators in there just enough to force a vote get a fucking uh, enough votes on it to make it believable and boom here we sit 106 years later how many wait a minute <laughs> 13 yeah 106 years later and we're still debating if the federal reserve bank should exist i think they proved it shouldn't exist in the 1800s but what do i know i'm just a voice on the radio what do I know? And then I listen to crazy people, you know, like Jerry at Bitshoot. Uh, no. But Jerry's got some, and he <laughs> he posted this crazy link. I saw Don repost something similar to it on the Real Liberty Media t today, I think it was. <laughs> and what it was about, the Prime Minister of New Zealand has junk. Yeah, they had the Prime Minister of New Zealand walking down this thing in a red dress. I think it was red. Jerry's on bit shoot if you want to see it. It's amazing. Anyway, I was like, wow, okay. But see, trick photography and all these things that I don't understand how to decipher and explain to other people. Oh, like subliminal messaging that they probably don't do. <laughs> it's like the difference between analog and digital you can control digital you can control the the frames per second at a rate the eye is not capable of even seeing so <laughs> there's your there's your upgrade for you digital digital is another trap and they got see the, the the control games. Oh, if you stay in the 1900s, you'll lose and you'll be left behind and people will point at you in public and go, oh, look at the relic. Well, so then there's that side of me that looks at what the public's doing and I got that same result about them. I look at them and think, oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, no, no, no. And occasionally... I've got like a 10-year-old, I don't know, some old relic Nokia phone. And it's got two phone numbers on it. One of them's useless now. And uh, the other one is my little wife. There you go. So that's as close to being trapped. <laughs> and it's part of the marriage. Uh I, that's as close to being trapped to the electronic world outside of the house as I'm willing to go is maybe twice a month when I go out. And I go out every other day. But about once every week or two, I'll remember to carry my, uh, maybe two to three weeks. I'll remember to take my phone in case I need to call Cirque and get a little translation because I'm picking up something I'm not really sure what this is. And outside of that, man, whoa. And I do all this other wacky shit, play internet games. I got a lifetime subscription to one of those nerd games that I play online. But when I first, you see, and that's the point. When I first saw that, I get a $200 thing and you have it for your whole life and you can, it'll follow you wherever you go. You can live anywhere in the world and this game will be there for you, and you'll be able to use it in your own language. And I went, whoa, cool, I can do that. So I did. But I don't have a, uh, today, I don't have an interest in doing all that stuff anymore. So I think I did it all in my past. Everything I did in my past was setting me up for my future, 
whatever that was. And, and now it's my past again. <laughs> so I don't know. I keep seeing links and people keep explaining things to me. And as they explain, lights come on in my own little mind and I start to realize this is how I see that. It doesn't have anything to do with Cirque or you. It's just, this is how I see that. Isn't that interesting? And with that, I have to give the other guy, the wow, this is how they see that. But when you try to diversify and come to terms and speak and communicate and exchange and all that crap, your differences take control and nothing ever comes of it. So... The internet, as far as a chat room goes, out, I guess if you're not learning anything, the only other purpose it could serve would be to be in, I won the argument. Look at me. I kicked your ass all over. I don't even know what that really means, but I've read it from other people. I don't think I say it. I just call a certain person a fraud. Uh, I get really disturbed by the input. You know, and the comments are just sometimes just beyond the pale. But that's my opinion. And I'm not afraid to go, hey, I think you're full of shit. Show me that you're not full of shit. i show you I'm not full of shit. <laughs> or maybe your interpretation of what I say is, hey, that guy's full of shit. <laughs> it does. And in the end... At the end of the day, if I'm the last thing that you're thinking about when you're closing your eyes, well, you might need to get a hobby. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm the last thing Cirque thinks about before she closes her eyes. <laughs> I got a yes, you are. Whoa. I, there's nothing wrong with anything until it affects an individual. And somehow or another, I just think that the individual has been replaced by the group. And the group is wrong. If the group was right, the results wouldn't be what they are now. We would be living in utopia if this fucking mess that we live under called government would ever just quit lying to us and tell us the fucking truth. But they don't. And if you can get past the Federal Reserve bank. I don't see how everything is based on currency flow. How you live depends on how much access you have to currency. And then there's some of us that we kind of skated around the currency and did a lot more in bartering and trading and connecting services. Outdated ideas that have been updated with the World Wide Web, but they're still the same, you know, when when you started out passing handwritten notes, and today you have a little thing that fits in the palm of your hand, and you can push a button and talk to somebody in the United States from Denmark, for example, that, well, that's some pretty impressive shit, but it's not natural, and we move at a speed that we're not supposed to. This is what I think here, folks. We're moving too fast in ways that we're not supposed to. And because of that, it causes a lot of friction. And friction creates waste. And that's what we live in. Waste. Eh, trying to explain it, I guess. Go to Larry Woods for his explanation about the, the coil. That'll give you some insight. He really helped me out a lot with the uh, the simplicity of making it simple for a dummy like me with no electrical background. I can install uh, boxes on the wall and whatnot, hook up some plugs, but uh, the deep-rooted how the electricity works, no. I leave that to the experienced professionals and the people I physically encountered knew what they were doing. They knew how to make electricity work, and boom, there you go. And they taught me a little bit about installing the components, but I never got curious when I was doing it about how it worked. And I think Larry, 
what Larry brought to me was the reality that it's delivered on a cycle that is, well, these are outdated words too, but it's delivered to us in a, in a way that produces waste because of the harmonic. And because of the waste, these are the results. And they're, oh, wow. So, to those of you out in the world that think that kind of stuff is all crazy talk, uh, maybe you should check out Larry Woods. And he's on Facebook for all you Facebook lovers out there that refuse to boycott Facebook like I do. <laughs> but shamelessly, I'll promote the people that know their shit on it. There's just, I don't think a lot of people know much about much. I think we each might be like good at one or two things, strong in this area, but the overall knowledge of, nah, that's a bunch of crap. That's, well, John said, so I'm going to believe John, and Mary said, so I'm going to believe Mary, and Grim said, and on and on and on. But when you come down to prove it, how do you prove two and two makes four? You can't. Because everything that you prove, there's somebody else over there that goes, hey, I can show you how that's not even right. You're not even correct. <laughs> so, we're stuck back in that loop, you know. If John jumps off the wall, you going to go follow him? Doesn't it depend on what's on the other side of the wall? <laughs> Does anybody ever ask a question? No, we're taught to obey authority. When authority says something to you, you just shut your fucking pie hole and straighten up and do as you're told. We get rid of your ass. Well, they said that to me enough times that I took it seriously at a real early age. I didn't know they were just talking shit. I thought they meant it. Well, by the, at the time it started... I was about 12, I would say. Uh, by the time I was 14, there that was that. There was no wondering about any of this crap anymore. It was very clear. <laughs> I don't know. Luck, you call it what you want. I've never met anybody in my life that had the history with people that I've had. Or the opportunity to learn all the different little bits I've caught. You know, and I, so I mean, I don't know a lot of shit. I just know a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I've managed to mix them all together and create something new. And <laughs> that's the individual, you know. That's the me that some people can't stand. Can't stand to see my name. Can't stand to see my ideas. Well, that's okay. That's what you're supposed to do. That is sadly what I expect out of everybody is to be, you know, excused, shoved aside, ignored, belittled, go away, oh, pothead, oh, you don't know shit, go off to your little pot and leave me alone. And the people that do that tend to be the ones that are sucked so deep into this game that they really believe it. <laughs> I think it's real. And I'll tell you, Hurricane Andrew and that earthquake in San Francisco, those two events, they, though they were years apart, one got my attention and the second one proved that Mother Nature doesn't give a flying shit about you because we don't give a flying shit about Mother Nature. <laughs> That's why we're encouraged to build buildings and societies in the known path of where hurricanes travel. <laughs> or, even better, this is what I, I thought, I learned in Orkney in Scotland was, you know, you can build buildings, even out of the crap that we use, that could withstand daily winds of excess 60, 80, 90 miles an hour. That wouldn't even... The building's not going to even move. Not, not a nothing. Okay, well, they had underground electric and a lot of modern day ideas plus the old uh, brick building. And they had walls all over the island that were still standing after hundreds of years of being built. So there was a lot of uh, 
a lot of proof to the questions that I, I wanted to ask. Then I lived in Miami, and boy, when that hurricane came through, we got leveled. But the day I was getting teased by the neighbors because I took it seriously, and I was staying at a friend's house, watching his house for him for a while. And he wanted to go to Lauderdale to go spend some time with his daughters. So he says, ah, and then we got this hurricane coming up. You know, you want to hang out in the house and make sure no, nothing goes wrong. And I said, oh, okay. But the news media hadn't taken the hurricane seriously. And Bob had asked me, can you board up the windows on this side of the house? I'm worried about, you know, stuff might blow through or something. So I did what he asked, and the neighbors were out having a beer laughing because I was boarding up the windows like Bob asked me to. (laughs) Anyway, that night, and it sounded like a train rolling by the house all fucking night. And the only damage to the property was, beside the tree limbs, was a bit of the kitchen roof got destroyed. And after that, there was nothing. We had to drive to Hollywood 30 miles, so I didn't do the drive, and somebody else had to go. I was staying back, taking care of the property. But so you drive 30 miles to go to Hollywood to get food and whatnot to bring back because we had no way to refrigerate shit and kids to take care of. It was a nightmare of nightmares. But nobody was laughing at me <laughs> about boarding up the house because uh, the news people didn't even announce what they knew, they lied. And this thing was, it blew like 200 mile an hour winds. It was just outrageous. It was uh, a frightening, terrifying experience to go through. No matter how tough you think you are, those hurricanes will rattle the toughest of us, I think. I could be wrong. Maybe you can sit for 12 or 14 hours listening to the wind. I can't. And then in the middle, it's got this freaking lull. It's called the eye. And everything comes down, the wind stops, and you can go out of your house, and then it, a little while later it all picks back up, and the other half of that storm comes through. So what, by the time I'd, I'd gotten to North Carolina and had one hit there, I was uh, experienced and <laughs> at natural disasters beyond my wildest expectation. But Mother Nature doesn't care where we are, what we're doing. It does what it does. And I think that the government interferes with these things in ways that we're not really experienced, educated about, understanding about. We don't know what they're doing. We just know they're doing something wrong. Because they're doing it. I don't need to have you define why the damn inoculation is bad after you've said mandatory inoculation. Wait a minute. What Mandatory? For what? What was it? Chicken pox? Or something like that. Some childhood fucking... You get these little swelly spots and you're down for about a week or ten days and then... You never get sick from that again because your your body built up an immunity to it while you had it. Something to do with nature. It's far, hey you guys, it's far beyond my abilities to simplify and make sense to everybody. I'm just hoping that you know maybe somebody out there that like Grimner and Rob, you know Cowboy Tech. Van Meter. Oh, there's a whole bunch of people here. Uh, Anti. Me and Anti are, uh, we're we're not politically synchronized. I think somebody was teasing him about being a Bernie fan or something today. Uh, I don't care who you're a fan of. To see, to me, it's all nonsense. To you. See, that is your opinion. And If you take it too seriously or you insult too much, people get a little, you know, upset with you, I would suppose. But to to hold a belief is one thing. To let other people to know 
what you believe, to let other people in on what you know. That's a whole nother game altogether. And Anti does radio. I know he's real. I've heard his voice. My wife even called him from the train to say hello, to hear him say, Hello, Circle. <laughs> And, you know, because she's still Danish, so some part of this American influence into her life has got to be a little bit exotic to her, I would assume. I would hope so. Especially with this group of uh, characters from the Real Liberty Media. Because we came over as a result of Mary, and so the RLM... Uh, oh, me and Sterk both landed on the RLM together and we'll leave together or not. <laughs> right, honey? I don't know what that meant. I was jibber jabbering on 20% off about the control games part two. What radio? Oh, wait a minute. Oh. No, oh, he's talking about his shortwave radio, I think, because, yeah, Morse code net L. Ha, ha, ha. Well, and that's another thing. I really like the anti wants to do some more radio, and he's got the strangest uh, interest in music like my wife. Oy. Some of the stuff she likes because she's younger than me. She grew up with a different kind of uh, interest in music, and I... And, uh, I'm stuck in my old crap, and I'm going to die with my old crap. You can keep the new crap. <laughs> well, Anti goes back to older times, 78s, and, and I think he leans more towards, say, the the softer side and the country side of music. But it's an interesting, uh, it's interesting to me to hear it live as opposed to um, talking about it or... Go into, I don't like live shows anymore. I'm such a snob in my old age. After I found out I could play the drums, I went, wow, no, it can't be this easy. Well, not that it's easy. It's that it was, once I tried it, I went, well, I didn't know I could do this. <laughs> it never occurred to me to try the damn thing, because I've tried guitars, and I've tried the bass, and I've learned a little bit, and played a little bit, but... Nothing like the drum kit. That was a that was a tool from hell to punish people, and nobody complained. It was the weirdest fucking... I've never had an experience like that with a, a loud, annoying tool like a drum kit. And, <laughs> oh, wow. I got the exact opposite of what I expected to get because of my indoctrination. <laughs> so... Because before I got the kit, I had played loud music uh, in my, um, I had this second floor of a shed thing, about 20 by 20 room, and a lot of room in there to put all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I used to blast my music with the doors open and no, never heard a word out of anyone. So when I started playing the drums with it, that didn't bother anybody. I think the two houses that could hear me, they were my friends anyway. So they, if they did want to complain, I wonder if they would have. Because uh, I'd ask, hey, you don't mind. Uh, no, no, you, you have fun. You do what you want. But again, with uh, neighbors, I was always good to the neighbors that were good to me. And <laughs> I've told you before. The one side neighbor was a redneck that hated a nigger. And for a while, the other house on the other side of me was a military guy who rented out to other military. So military would live there for a year, year and a half, and then be transferred or whatever. And somebody else in the military would move in. One of the kids, the last kid that lived there before I went to Scotland, uh, he had a birthday party for his son. It was such a, the end was such a drama. Uh, he was taking his truck into the backyard to pack up all the big, uh, he had this house and he had to take it apart and put it in the truck. Well, the dog ran under the truck and he ran him over. And here I am, you know, and this guy's all in tears, big tough Marine. He just ran over his freaking dog. He's holding him in his arms, all half dead and bloody. So I helped him with the dog. So I wondered, you know, maybe because I was like that with him about his dog, if that wasn't why he was okay with me about the music. 
And then the people on the other side in the back that could hear it, but not the neighbor that with the nigger thing. They didn't hear, never, never heard, bothered to say anything about nothing to anybody. The people directly behind me, I used to, uh, <laughs> I used to help her with uh, commodities she couldn't find on the <laughs> military market, and she had an illness, and uh, <clears throat> she wanted some of my uh, help getting things that were hard to find <laughs> anyway so i guess the point behind all that story about those two people is did they tolerate my music because i was kind to them and they had they didn't want to hurt my feelings or was it just hey oh yeah i seen i seen a picture of you anti with one of your bases man what yeah I can't play a guitar or a bass to save my butt. And it would be such a thrill. I got tiny little hands, so I'm really limited on what I can't reach. I can't reach chords. It's just sad. But I guess they build small guitars for people like me, midget guitars. But it's not the same, you know. We, I didn't want to be a prima donna. I can only do that if I have my special decoder ring and I'm wearing my Yamaha. <laughs> oh, Van Meter's thinking of getting a banjo. And Anti's thinking of getting bongos. We're going to have the reallibertymedia.com band. <laughs> they just go on wire and play live. <laughs> That'd be a kick, wouldn't it? <laughs> I remember, who was trying to get Grim to play some, oh, Chloe, Chloe's gone now, but <laughs> she kept pestering Grim, oh, go pull that guitar and sit down and tune it and play us a song and 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 and, and telling and telling and telling, but never doing, <laughs> no, she was an artist, I got to get off her back about that part, she did do her own artwork, I saw her drawings, they were as good as anything I could do, I guess, in that media. I, I'm more of a cartoonist than a real-life drawer, you know, artist. I don't lack the real world. As, uh, even my puzzles are all based on watercolor pictures, I think. Right, sir? Isn't that the foundation of these puzzles? They're, they're paintings of watercolors. So when you see the box, you see a solid picture in the advertisement and then of course i already know this in my mind so i'm not shocked but then when you get the puzzle you go wow this is a watercolor painting and when you see it up close from the box it's so much looser than the picture is so it makes the loose work makes it harder to define lines and separate the way I, my brain was taught to identify what i see so i got a work my brain in a different way to figure out what piece of the puzzle goes where <laughs> and just like life i think my obsession with puzzles is no different than my curiosity about looking at the the rest of the world and trying to figure out why it's so easy for them to play along and it's so damn hard for me i it just rubs me raw i hate signing my name on anything i've only let's see in the last i guess 20 years 30 40 <laughs> all it's been is uh permission from the state to travel or to sleep with somebody legally i suppose is what you call it in the long run because if you don't you know if you don't do these um particular things to please society society gets nasty and financially punishes you for not playing along so in some ways i play along and in some ways i don't and personally i think that the ways that i don't outweigh the ways that i do but again like uh, everybody else we all got our opinions about what is and what ain't and what should never be. <laughs> I don't like that. I suppose. Because I'm not short. I'm just more down earth than most people. Not all people, though. Just most people. There's uh, quite a few of... See, I don't like that like-minded crap. Because I don't think like anybody on the Real Liberty Media particularly 
But there are some real big topics that we agree on. And because of that, you overlook the areas where you disagree. And I think maybe that's my excuse for uh, diversity, how you can actually use it. You incorporate, like a web. This is what we did before the Internet. We uh, connected with people. I know a guy that has a cousin that has a friend, and she knows this guy that works over at the Hilton, and he can get you some. You know, one of those deals. Right, because everybody wants some of those Hilton shower caps and bathrobes to put in their house so they can be important. I've been to the Hilton. Look at me. (laughs) Jeez. It is amazing in a way that depending on your possessions, uh, how it will or will not impress other people. (laughs) Because to me, in the end, I don't care how you look at this game. To me, I'm always in one room. Wherever, whatever happens, one room. I leave this room, and I go into another room. But you know what? I'm still in a room. So the aesthetics of the room, that's all a matter of interpretation. And I'll leave that you know, to the control masters, let them play their control games, and uh, I refuse to parrot idiots. That is what I think. Unfortunately, the people who I don't, re- you know, recall or think of as idiots are thought so as idiots by the general population. <laughs> so. I'm stuck in the fringe of the fringe of the fringe and trying to make the best of it. And in 20% off at a time, believe me, I'll catch up if it takes me the rest of my life. But as a last thought for all you kids out there in radio land, if you really want to understand more about some of the foundation of what I'm talking about, the more detailed thing. I would recommend doing a little research into frequency and vibration. And it's sometimes for me, it's more confusing trying to explain it than it is to get a feeling of understanding it. So again, back to the individual. My explanation of something like that might not click with the way that you interpret knowledge. So it's got to be something you do all by yourself on your very own because you want to. I'm just recommending it because it does seem to me to be a starting point to find out what's happening. And thanks for hanging out with me tonight on 20% off. We're going to call that a show. And I'm going to do the schedule from memory tonight, you lucky people. Because it's Thursday. I know what day it is. (coughs) Friday. And Wednesday, but Friday at 7 o'clock on the East Coast of the USA, we got Graham Z in a Rocket Chair podcast. And later on that night, 11 o'clock on the East Coast, we got Grim Deer and Moose Girl. Or, if you're a sexist, Moose Girl and Grimner. We don't want to pick one over the other. <laughs> and they're going to be doing the Freakers Ball. And i uh, tell you, if you've not heard the Freaker's Ball, the live music on the Freaker's Ball has got to be, that's probably the best part of, you know, and I'm a music guy. But of all the things that uh, we do on radio here, the Freaker's is the cornerstone, and I recommend it for, well, for one, the Moose and the Grimner, but the the best music is on the Freaker's Ball. And Saturday, I'll be back with the dork table i'm looking for hostages maybe i can get graham z or Vinny or somebody this week to come by and visit and then sunday we got um blues in the morning into the trivia into hal anthony beyond the woodshed and see monday night oh that's at three o'clock on the west coast in the u.s 
And then Monday night, 7 o'clock, Grim comes on with Grim Leftovers from what he doesn't get finished on the Freaker's Ball. Unless he changes his mind and he just reads something new like he did the week last week. <laughs> I don't know. He's nuts, that Grimner guy. And then Tuesday, I don't know, hostage or not, I'm coming back to do In a Perfect World. And I might kidnap Vincent because me, <laughs> me and Vinny see the world completely different. And then at the same time, completely the same. So it. It kind of sounds like insanity and arguing. but eh. <laughs> And then Wednesday, and let's see what time is that. Uh, that's my 7 o'clock. So that's 1 o'clock on the east coast of the U.S. on Tuesday. Wednesday, again, Graham Z, 7 o'clock east coast in her Rocket Chair podcast. And thanks a lot, everybody. Over and out.